Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, we've got another pistol video for you here. We have another offering from the Custom Works division of Sig Sauer, and that's going to be the Sig P320 AXG Combat. Now, about eight months ago, we looked at the AXG Classic, which uh, seems to be a whole different kind of gun altogether. And so we're going to see exactly what kind of features they're giving us with the combat version of this firearm and find out whether it's a good choice for concealed carry or just a whole lot of gun. We're going to get into all that in just a minute. All right, once again, thanks for being with us. If this is your first time coming to the channel or if you've been watching our videos before and you just haven't had a chance to do so before now and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your computer screen there. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and you can subscribe that way. It's a simple thing that helps out a whole lot and we really appreciate it. So, Six Hour P320 AXG Combat. Like I said, we looked at the uh, AXG Classic version of this um, about eight months ago or so, and um, it was a really good gun, shot really well, had some nice features, and um, Six Hour seems to be putting a lot of um, effort behind developing these custom versions of these guns. So let's see what you're going to get here. But we always like to start off, of course, with a size comparison. And I think that's going to be important here. Uh, let me do a quick safety check before I do that. Just so you can see, we are clear and we have an empty magazine. Um, but I want to leave the magazine in it for the comparison, of course, because we got a whole lot of firearm here. Now, I am a pretty big fan of my hammer fired SIGs which are generally heavier, bigger guns. So I grabbed one of my bigger ones here, which is my 229 Dark Elite. And as you can see, I also grabbed it because it has a threaded barrel. So we're kind of on even playing ground. Now this is a very, very large handgun. This is, this is at the very top end of what I will carry. And I really don't really carry this one concealed at all um, these days with the other good options. But you can see how big this p320 is there are some similarities as far as size in the you know front part of the frame and even the trigger guard although it starts getting a little bit bigger here but you really pick up a lot of size right here in the grip on the 320 and then you got that magazine sticking out so if you've ever carried a full-size sig and you know how much of a chore that is just take a look at this because this is not a small gun and I wanted you to see that because, of course, you know, one of the big considerations for carrying a concealed firearm is going to be comfort. And if the gun is really big, then you have to have just the right holster to make that work out. All right, we're going to jump right into the features here. But before we do, I want to take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of the Sig Sauer P320 AXG Combat from the Custom Workshop. For our tabletop review today, uh, Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough. So, we're going to take another quick safety check here, let you see that we are clear and safe. Nothing there, no magazine. Chamber is empty. I want to start with the magazines, because these are kind of nice. you got these 21-round magazines, and... You get three of them. Now, for some people, that's not a big deal, but this is a custom gun, limited edition gun. So having, you know, three of the matching magazines that go with it out of the box is kind of nice. It's something you don't have to buy unless you just want to get extras. Going across the top here, the first thing you'll notice is you will see there is a optics plate. And uh, being a SIG, I'm sure they want you to run out and get the Romeo 1 Pro. And if you do, it'll go right there, no problem. Um, you do have your suppressor height sights there. Those are the X-Ray 3 day-night suppressor height sights, which come in real handy since you do have a threaded barrel. That means you don't have to change them out if you decide to put a suppressor on here, which is kind of nice. Pretty good serrations on the front and rear, you know, as you look across this thing. Um, <clears throat> the slide, of course, this is stainless steel with a nitron finish, so it's pretty nice. You do have your... Um, accessory rail here on the frame. Uh, the frame material is stainless steel and this is kind of nice. 
If you like to run lights and lasers on your guns, you're able to do that without any problem at all. Uh, your barrel is carbon steel. You come down through here, you got a pretty good sized trigger guard. I'm always a fan of such things because I like to be able to keep my finger clear but drop right into the trigger guard without having to hunt and peck in a little tiny hole. Of course, there's your slide lock and release. It is ambidextrous, which is kind of nice. And of course, you've got your takedown lever. And on these SIGs, all you have to do once you're locked is just put, rotate this down and then release your slide and everything will come right off. Um, I've done a complete takedown on several of these, so I'm not going to waste too much time on that. It's just like many of the others you've seen. Uh, you do have your trigger here. This is the skeletonized flat trigger, which just basically means they've cut holes in it. So if you like a flat trigger with holes in it, there you go. Um, you've got this grip panel. One thing that SIG's making a big deal out of with these is that, you know, you can put these custom grip plates in here. And in this case, they did the, the G10 um, FDE grip panel for this and it does look nice it's an odd you know combination of colors but I don't dislike any of it it looks very um, very nice well done you have your magazine release here on the side and it's a like so it's a pretty large firearm as I was showing you with the comparison in the beginning and the location of the magazine release here doesn't interfere with any of my typical grip uh, and that's really how I judge these is if using a normal grip, if I feel like my finger is going to get into this and it doesn't. And it's a very easy mechanism to work. Um, of course, you do have the mag well. And the big thing there, of course, is about speed of reloading. If you have a really tight, limited space on those, it can be a lot harder to put your magazine in, although it's not really a problem. For me on most guns, but this thing is designed to have all of those features that people are looking for that want to do serious shooting and fast reloads. Um, it's a nice firearm. has a good set of features on it. As I said, once again, it is not a small firearm, but uh, once again, this is really geared around having every single feature that you would want with, um, you know, your sights, your suppressor, your trigger, and large capacity. All right, so let's talk about the range real quick. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time going over the range with this today because to me, and if you've shot any of the P320s, you may know what I'm talking about. But, you know, a lot of these, they really seem about the same. The biggest changes I've seen has really come more with how the gun feels because of the materials, how well balanced it is when you shoot it. But the trigger... The trigger in all these P320s to me is just virtually the same. Um, you can see we are clear here before we take a look at this. But you know, when I when I pull this trigger, there's a little and and to me you've got a little kind of a little crunchy area right here, and then you hit this small wall and pull, and you got you know a relatively clean break, and it's got a decent, but it's not what I would call a short reset. But it's pretty predictable. To me, this trigger just has kind of a, you know, a simple, short, but kind of a clunky little feel to it. Now, after you've shot it a while, it's pretty easy to get good results shooting the firearm. So if you're wanting to use this for home defense or just a gun for honing your skills practice, whether it's a concealed carry firearm, I think you'd be okay with the trigger. But... As far as I'm concerned, none of these have got triggers that I would consider great. They're okay. And it's a nice firearm. It has a lot of features. And it seems like it's pretty reliable. But pretty much every P320 that I've shot, the trigger feels about the same way. The main differences in how this one feels and shoots has more to do with the materials and how the gun responds, how it handles recoil. Those kinds of things make this shoot a little bit better to me than some of the others, but not because of any features itself. So if you're expecting this to be something to set a new standard for accuracy and, and that type of thing, you're not going to have that. It's pretty much like most of the other 320s I've had my hands on. So what's it like to carry the SIG 320 AXG Combat as a carry gun? Well, I mentioned in the beginning that this is a whole lot of handgun. And... 
I wanted to cover it just because if we get a new gun that comes out and it might have something to offer, we certainly want to talk about it. But anytime we look at something like this, we're really getting into the really the, the very top end of size of what I would even consider carrying. Now, for some people, that doesn't make any difference. So I'm not knocking anybody that does it. But to me, this is a whole lot more handgun than I would ever carry. As a matter of fact, the only way I could carry this was using one of my um, crossbreeds. You know, I've got a lot of these crossbreed um, super tucks. And, you know, they're Kydex. They're made pretty well. They're, they're, they've got the big Kydex compartment here and the four side. And when they go against the body, they're super comfortable. But they got two clips. And that helps distribute the weight of this really, really big gun better on your belt. But even with that holster and on a good belt, on a good solid carry belt, this is still a lot. And you got to remember, you've got 21 rounds of 9mm ammunition in here too. So it's not like this is a light firearm in any way. So if you like a big gun, this might be the thing for you. Um, as a carry gun, to me, this is a little too big. This is a little too big out of my window of what I'm going to carry. And once again, that's just me. I know people that carry a lot larger firearms than that routinely, and they're perfectly happy. And I can do it in a good holster. It's just more weight than I want, and it's almost impossible for me to really get comfortable in the car with this on my hip. So if you're considering this as a carry gun, and maybe you have... Uh, you know, maybe your body composition, maybe you're one of these people that can carry a really large firearm appendix carrier. You have other means of carrying, and this may be okay for you. But I think for the average person, they're going to find that that's a whole lot of firearm to try to conceal. Overall impressions of the SIG P320 AXG Combat. Well, like I said, we looked at several of these P320s already, and, and they're pretty nice guns. Now, I will say that between the AXG Classic and the Combat, um, I do kind of like the combat better just because out of the box, it's got every single thing that you need. So, although this isn't a gun I think that I would carry as a concealed carry firearm, I would certainly carry this firearm, um, on my property. Like I would carry this open carry. Um, it's a good size firearm for that. It carries very well in a outside the waistband holster. I've got some larger holsters that can... I think do a better job outside the waistband than inside the waistband. Lots of capacity. It is a good feeling and good shooting firearm. So I think it's a very good firearm. I think it has a lot of good features. And I, I think that overall they're pretty reliable. But it's just a bit much for me to even consider as a carry gun. Now the other thing is, of course these are not cheap. So if you're the kind of person who is looking for something as your regular gun you know I've seen these things vary you know thirteen hundred fourteen hundred dollars these are not cheap and that kind of reminds me of you know the days back when I was buying a lot of my larger hammer fired um, SIGs because these were all you know pretty expensive firearms these were twelve hundred thirteen fourteen hundred dollar firearms depending on you had them configured and that's what I see when I see this. I don't see this as a economical carry gun. I see this as a high-end gun. This is something that someone who really likes these features, who's comfortable with a larger firearm, might pick this for a carry gun. But beyond that, I think most people, this would be more of a home defense gun or a gun to serve some other purposes in your arsenal. But in any case, it has good features and it seems to be reliable. So that's going to do it. Once again, we appreciate you being with us as always. We'll be back very soon with another video for you. So until that time, as always, everybody be safe and have a great day. Thank you.